Justin Carter in the 85's got the pull. I'd like to have something more to say about him, but you know, when you take about five seconds to fill out the form at the beginning of the season, you, you just don't, I, I don't have anything. Anyways, Matthew Engelram on the outside in the 47. He actually tapped the wall already there. Solid start, quality drive there by the 47 who won at Homestead Miami somehow. That's uh, Mifuni Sanjuro in the sixth, starting third. Currently in third still, uh, racing hard with Jogi Lethanen and Engelram as Carter begins to pull away in the opening few laps. Closing in on lap number 10 and Carter is gone in the number 85. Not the first time that the purple 85 has been, uh, has done well at a short track. I imagine they probably borrowed or uh, something or got something similar to the setup that uh, J.R. Fitzpatrick had a couple of years ago back in 2015. Engelram in the wall again. You gotta stop doing that, man. Don't, don't. That's not how to go fast, man. Jokey Lefinen, new contender up at the front here uh, in the 666. Might have just brushed the wall there. And here comes Alexander Rowe for that second spot. John Arn up into fourth. He's looking for redemption after throwing it away on the final lap at Brass Town Ball and a pretty intense finish. Ooh, bump there from Rowe. Uh, these two racing awfully hard so early on in this race. Ten laps out of a 110 lap event. Why 110 laps? Because uh, it's too mainstream? Uh, why not? Some new contenders in the top five and ten. That's Zayden Davidson in the nine. I have no clue where the hell he started but he's doing awfully well in that nine machine. He hasn't had a lot of luck his whole career, so it's nice to see him uh, doing so well uh, so far. That's Intivia Kingray in the 03 up into the top 10 for sure. Estevas Cortez has been on a tear the last few laps. Uh, not surprisingly, DJ Curtis is there in the 33, going for his third consecutive win. That, that would be a hard record if he was able to get it done, uh, but uh, what a start to the season it's been for him as he's got an enormous points lead heading into this event. Sidney Grass as well doing well uh, is uh, looking pretty strong in the 21 car. Bill Littlejohn for once is doing well at the track type that um, he made a name for himself in, in the Pacific Northwest. Traditionally hasn't been doing too well in the uh, Hark Shore track races either. Um, not having a car competitive with uh, m most of the cars at the top end of the field or ending, ending up in wrecks. Uh, but he's, uh, got, he's got a new sponsor on board for the 2017 season. It's uh, Long John Silvers. Uh, Little John, a self-claimed aficionado of the Long John Silvers joint. And of course, that, that would be why he has them aboard the number 30 for this season. Uh, Jim Gambit in the 44 is a couple of positions ahead. I haven't really talked about him too much as Curtis makes an aggressive move down to the bottom of Lethanin and and Boyles up there. They're racing awfully hard, but 25 laps in and we're still green. Amazing job by these guys to keep it nice and clean in these opening laps. Some drivers running towards the tail of the field include uh, Zachary Fitzwater Sr. who has not had the best start to the year. Um, Mike Viznovsky traditionally did fairly well on the paved short tracks in the uh, Hart can -M series, finishing second, I believe, at um, in New Brunswick. That's John Bonnell going underneath him. Uh, back behind them, it's Can uh, Caden Van Evenhoven, William Duncan in the 83, who finally kind of got a, an okay run at Brass Town Ball. Certainly better than most of his runs back in 2016, a season that he'll want to continue to forget. Um, behind them it's AJ Green who currently only has seven points to his name and is currently dead last in points. That's that's really rough but he's got lots of time to improve that at least. And Blake Camphausen who rolled over at, at the newcomers race, crashed out in Homestead but managed to get a quiet 19th place finish at Brass Town Ball. Back up towards the front is Little John 
in the top 10 now, holding on to that 10 spot. Voyle's going for a run down into turn one. That was aggressive, and he pulled, moved up into Endumian, who was kind of moving down. That was kind of a racing deal, but I put the blame a little bit more on Voyle's. For that one, we're wrecking further up as well, as Hartono and Price went for a quick little spin there as we're racing back to the yellow. Two and three wide, and they wreck again. That's Hartono's second spin of this lap, I think. Everyone ducked to the inside. Price narrowly avoided the crash, but afterwards he and Denzel Williams made some contact. Hartono went for a brief little spin. Pretty minor damage to that 24 as everyone continues racing back to the line. Tony Green way too aggressive there in the 32. I think he's gonna get a warning for the officials about that one because that was that wasn't that was pretty sketchy, not gonna lie. Uh, Artona goes for his second spin and he will be delegated to the extreme rear of the field on the restart. Carter brings the field back to the restart. Arnt looked like he spun the tires, but he got off the line pretty well, and here he comes with a run on the number 85. As you actually briefly saw the back of the field, this track, so many cars on this track that you, they're pretty much almost a lap down when we go back to green flag conditions, but we're still side by side for that first position. Very, very tight racing between those two. Got to make sure you don't make too much contact. It's still too early to be throwing the race away, and Arn should know that all too well near contact again. The 85 continues to hold the outside line, and he's got pinned up there by Mifune Sanjuro in the number six. Here, Arndt slides up just a little bit, and that will actually cover the 85's line. Now back down to the bottom to cover Sanjuro. A little bit of contact there. That's very, very good racing for the first and second uh, positions. Sanjuro nearly by. Going to slide up. Not able to do so. Goes, keeps down to the bottom, and will finally get the spot. Now, Cortez forced to give up that third back to the 85, and and Cortez will have to uh, have a go in another few laps or so. Carlin Dumian has been a second and a half or so off the pace every lap since Daniel Voiles has made contact with the one to cause that first caution. Here comes Arn trying to get by him. Can Sanjuro take advantage of this? Yes, pins him up to the high side and is going to try and get Arndt stuck behind and doing it, and it works. A very smart move by Sanjuro. Arndt is, I imagine, getting impatient, forces it three wide, and manages to get through the middle, and he's back into third. Amazing job by Arndt there, as he's going to try and hold off Cortez for that spot, and Dumian is passed successfully by most of the rest of the field without too much of a problem. Zayden Davidson getting caught behind for quite a while, though kind of really unfortunate for the uh, the Aussie driver there in the number nine. Uh, the 17 of Denzel Williams is currently going by. No one's really giving Davidson an inch, and he's going to have to force his way down to the bottom. Wasn't able to get it done again there. Justin Carter in the 85 has been reeling in the number six, but catching Sanjuro is one thing, and passing him is going to be a whole nother story. A little bit of contact there off the corner. The six actually went down the racetrack slightly. Here comes the 85 on the bottom. Can he make it stick through turn two? No, absolutely can't. It's Sanjuro. He's going to hold on to that lead. Very close battling between these top two or three cars. They're all pretty well equal. I'd say the 85 continues to probably be the strongest car on the racetrack. Here he comes with a run, trying to get that lead back. And with just a few more laps led, Justin Carter will uh, lock down the most laps led bonus of the race. Cortez and Arndt closing in on these top two as they battle for that spot. Carter's uh, cleared Sanjuro successfully, and it doesn't look San like Sanjuro is going to get the lead back in the next little while. Brief update on some of the back markers. These include drivers who are a lap down or at the very tail of the field due to their damage. So we've got Taylor Price back here, uh, Viznovsky, the 88 of Sylvian Lasavage is one lap down actually, 
ended up hitting due to a flat tire after uh, the restart might have picked up some debris from uh, some of the incidents during the caution not not quite sure there the only other car uh, one lap down at the moment is Carlin Dumian and 41 out of the 42 starters remain on the racing surface the only car out of the race is AJ Green in the 55 who damaged uh, his engine terminally uh, following uh, hitting Christian Hartono for the uh, first caution. Sanjuro with the run again. My God, that was a slide up and a half into the 85 there. Don't think Carter's going to appreciate that one too much, but they're still side by side and they're closing in quickly on those slower lap traffic that I was just talking about. Estevas Cortez is trying to take advantage of the 85 being pushed up high to maybe get into second. Ended up having uh, to give the spot back to the 85, but it, it is starting to get towards go time. And Cortez, I'm sure, uh, knows this. The, the only Mexican driver in the field and also one of the only two members, driver members of the LGBTQ community, the other being Skyla Johnson, who I don't think is in this race, uh, is doing very very well in this Concord event so far they're sitting in second place uh, in in the 05 is John Art who has to uh, settle for third for now Sydney Crass in the 21 has run a quiet yet persistent race exactly what uh, she needed to do after what happened in Brass Town Bald Alexander Rowe, one position up in the 10th spot, has been complaining recently of uh, some pretty s severe understeer, getting real tight into the corners, and that he does once again there, ends up in the wall actually, and Krasta with nowhere to go, Rowe into the inside wall, Krasta into the outside wall, look out, alright, we're okay, and it looks like as Gambit and, and uh, other drivers managed to successfully avoid um, the slow 21. Preston, not with too much damage, should be able to continue on, but uh, certainly going to lose a lot of spots for that one, and not her fault at all. Pace car in and getting ready for the green flag. Zanjuro leads him back uh, with Cortez in second. Price and Camphausen appear to be in third and fourth, but they are actually a lap down. Cortez going for the spot. Cor uh, of course, Price is a lap down because of the rear end damage. Camphausen doesn't really have too much of an excuse though. He doesn't have any damage to that 441 car. Just, I guess, an ill handling race car and just hasn't been able to work traffic at all. That's Ike Durbin stalled up near the wall. We'll have to take a look at what rang out the caution so soon after the restart there. Coming to the restart, there was a bit of a stack up there. Carter really buggered up the restart. I think he spun his tires there. And uh, because of that, everyone was right on each other's tails heading into turn one. Bejenov got into Durbin and sent him up the track. Piet actually got a little bit of air there before heading into the wall and a huge stack up crash there as everyone dives to the inside while racing two and three wide. For whatever reason, Alexander Rowe in the 36 was allowed to start 14th, despite all that damage that he had on that car and not coming into the pits to try and repair any of it. And as we got the green flag, Denzel Williams got held up quite a bit. Saw the smoke in front of him, made a rookie mistake, tried to get down to the bottom. Caitlin Sang was there. Acevedo Curtis, Andreas Allen Torres, Moore, and Antiva Kingray all got a little a piece of that. Safety workers really had to get out there to uh, pick up the debris in a hurry to try and get this one uh, back underway uh, as Ike Durbin got that car stalled out on the spot between the uh, between uh, the flat banking where the uh, safety trucks come on and the banking for these race cars. Apparently he will continue I'm hearing from his pit crew. Pace car in once again. Let's see if we can make it more than one green flag lap. That would be that would be really preferable. Gotta say, 10 out of 10. Like would recommend if we can get more than one green flag lap. Anyways, Antivia Kingray, Robert Piat, Gavin Moore, 
and Sebastian Torres all out of the race as a result of that melee back in turn number two. As the top two cars pull away, uh, partially due, due to the lap cars, but also perhaps due to the fact that they are just legitimately the fastest cars out there. And guess what? We didn't make it a lap. What a surprise. Well, this is one of the messiest restarts I've ever seen. Alexander Rowe still put in 16th position, despite being well off the pace. Denzel Williams passes two cars before we even hit the start-finish line. That's that's about as illegal as it gets. Lester gets into Rowe. That turns Williams around, who is actually starting to check up to try and get down pit road. Gambit and Fitzwater Sr. into the wall as well. Williams continues to go try to go down to pit lane. Voyles gets collected and turned over by Acovito in the 45. What? <laughs> Onboard Duncan with audio from Duncan during the restart. That sure was a big mess back there. Oh, oh, oh wait, it was Boyle's fault? Eh, I don't care then. Not sure what he saw that I didn't. But when it comes to that Boyles incident, but uh, all right. Sanjuro's gonna have 21 laps to hold off Cortez and the rest of the field. The green flag back out, and it looks like Sanjuro caught Cortez sleeping there on the restart. Either that or Cortez spun his tires a little bit. Back behind Cortez, it's Price and Camphausen, both a lap down and racing for position. That's gonna ke keep third place John Art and fourth on back from challenging for the time being. And I don't want a commentator's curse this, but I, I can't express how important this win could be for Maverick GP should Sanjuro be first across the line. It's been nearly four years since Maverick GP, previously known as Team Thunder, previously known as something else. I can't even recall that's how long it's been. Uh, has been to victory lane. That was, of course, with William Duncan back in the 2013 season at Bristol Motor Speedway. So Sanjuro has got to hold off Cortez if he's if if he's going to hang on to this one. The crews for both Sanjuro and William Duncan are pretty much completely silent down on pit road, and I can't blame them. They've done their jobs as best as they can. And it's all just going to come down to how Sanjuro drives these last few laps. They can't do anything more for Sanjuro as he races with Cortez. They bump a little bit into turn one. Cortez, uh, sorry, that Sanjuro bounces off the wall a little bit and loses quite a bit of time to Estevaz. Cortez, Estevaz seems, gets tight though through turn three. And it's going to be a grudge match between these two drivers. Estevaz, Cortez. Like I said earlier, one of the the only Mexican driver in the field and, and one of only two LGBTQ members uh, of the driver community. That's Ike Durbin into the pits. It would mean a lot to Cor for Cortez to get the victory and become one of the first rookie drivers to, uh, to win a Hark event uh, this year, especially considering the bad luck that Estevaz Cortez has has had in his other racing ventures such as the uh, Utica Rallycross series. Well behind the top two but catching a little bit is Bill Littlejohn in the 30 who's sitting in third place currently being pushed up the racetrack by the 441 of Blake Camphausen. Got into the wall quite heavily there actually and that will hold up John Arndt. Demir Bejenov is up here as well. He's done quite well at short tracks in the last few years, surprisingly. Not not what he traditionally was good at, the Kazakh driver in the number 13 machine. Another close call there as the 30 got into the one. And some wild racing here. Max Anderson, where did he come from? 40th, I think, at the start of this race. I think he started in the back row of the grid and he's up to sixth or seventh at the moment. Insane run in this, this 110 lap race, but some chaotic racing as we uh, go into the final few laps. Cortez and Sanjuro find themselves racing through lap traffic. We've got under 10 to go 
I don't really understand what's happening a few positions back. Blake Camphausen somehow has held off everybody further back. It's like his car has suddenly come to life. I, I don't understand that boy at, at all. I, I, I don't get it. I, I don't get how that's possible. But anyways, nonetheless, Cortez and Sanjuro side by side. Co Sanjuro got uh, really loose out of turn number one. How is Alexander Rowe gonna going to um, influence this lead battle? Held up Cortez a little bit, but fairly gracious. A fairly gracious back marker was Rowe just then. I'm, I'm sure some of the other drivers on the racetrack wouldn't agree, especially those caught up in the, uh, the, the past few cautions. But speaking of cautions, we were under caution again with just five or six laps to go. And uh, Sanjuro back into the race lead. Cortez is going to have to get that pass done again. Cortez cannot afford to, uh, to butcher the restart like he did last time. Irvine, Fullerton, and Bunnell were racing for 18th spot. And Fullerton just got into turn one way too hard. Not sure whether it was brake fade or just personal mistake by, there by Fullerton. But either way... Uh, Fullerton and Bunnell got some pretty significant damage, as did Viznovsky, who's going to bring it in. Fitz Van Evenhoven also got a tiny piece. But uh, I think Fullerton's been fairly frustrated uh, in the second half of the race. Hasn't been able to pass cars, even, even ones that have significantly more damage than he does. Pace car in, and just two laps are left on the board when Zanjiro comes back to the green flag. Again, there's a lap car between second and third. So it's going to be another personal battle between Sanjuro and Cortez, the two fastest cars of the day. They've kept it clean and green so far as far as they're racing between each other. But anything can happen in these last couple of laps. Cortez slips along the bottom and is able to clear. Sanjuro's are coming to the white flag, but the caution's out. As well, pace car back on the circuit. We're going to have to settle this one in a green-white checkered. Carlin Dumian found himself in the middle of the field, and there wasn't a whole lot he could do to get out of the way of William Duncan and others. Denzel Williams again passes illegally before the uh, the green flag. Engelram shoves Duncan up wide. Duncan into, and Dumian down into Engelram. Engelram back up the track and nearly upside down there as Lasavage gets a big chunk, as does Zachary Fitzwater Sr. As the chaos unfolded behind him, DJ Curtis would make a dive to pit lane as we came to the white flag. He was worried about a tire that went down on that 33. Probably could have crawled it back around, but was worried about causing something bigger. Came down pit road. Ended up going a lap down, wasn't able to get back out in front of the leader taking the temporary checkered flag. Because of that, he won't be in the green-white checkered. Only lead lap cars uh, in the green-white checkered and only those with superficial um, cosmetic damage uh, are allowed to participate in the green-white checkered as per the Hark rulebook. Uh, kind of an important note there, uh, especially for uh, new spectators. Sanjuro gets a great restart over Cortez, but Cortez still hanging on the bottom. That's Gambit and Bejenov in row two. They might have a shot, and we haven't really seen what they can do with these top two because of those lap cars continuously getting in the way on the restarts. No more problems with those. Cortez just barely edged Sanjuro at the line as we came to the white flag, but Sanjuro trying to fight back again on the outside. Who's going to win it? Still side by side, down into three. Cortez got onto the apron a little bit. Here comes Sanjuro, and Sanjuro wins it by just a few hundredths of a second. And Sanjuro will break the four-year winless streak for Maverick GP. Phenomenal run by Sanjuro, and very respectful racing between Sanjuro and Cortez in those final couple of laps. Estevas Cortez forced to pull into pit lane in second position with runs like that. Eventually they're going to get one of these things. It's the second photo finish that Rage Motorsports drivers have lost so far this season. Joshua Michaels lost to uh, Curtis back in Homestead, Miami by a hundredth of a second in uh, the other one. 
Jim Gambit in the 44 managed to uh, pull a, uh, the final spot on the podium. Demir Bejenov pushed his way to fourth. Uh, that's Justin Carter who fell to fifth in the 85 car, had a really godly car early on in the race. Uh, fell a bit towards the end though, not sure whether that was due to uh, the track cooling down or him just uh, using a bit too much of his tires early on, but either way, still a solid run. Lucas Knight finishes sixth in the eight car. That's uh, Max Anderson in the 43, easily the hard charger of the race, up from 41st position to seventh. He was fast in practice, ended up nearly crashing his car though in qualifying, and that put him at the back of the grid for uh, this one. John Arndt in the 05. Uh, finishes eighth. Uh, good recovery run after uh, after the calamities back in Brasstown. Bald. Zayden Davidson finally a good run for one of the Aussie drivers, finishing a ninth in the nine car. And Caitlin Sang another solid top ten in the uh, 07. Uh, 